Hello all. Here we are again with the Not So Silent Sisters. Thank you guys so much for coming to watch. Those of you that are live with us in the chat, I see you, I appreciate you, and I'm super excited. This episode this week was major, in a major but way. Those of you that are live with us in the chat, I see you, I appreciate you, and I'm super excited. This episode this week was major, in a major way. I see you there, that me? Was in the chat. I see you, I appreciate you, okay. and I'm super excited. This episode... Yeah, that's the worst, when it's yourself that's causing the destruction. I was like waiting for one of y'all to fix it. It was me. In case you notice, I'm the queen of the north. Or in my head I am. Team Sansa all day. Episode, epic, awesome. And I am joined by so many lovely, awesome ladies. Um, of course, the Not So Silent Sisters is me and my sister originally. She's on her way. She's having some technical difficulties. The North members will join us soon. But in the meantime, we will let these other beautiful women introduce them, themselves. Um, I'll let you go first. Tea Baby. Hey, hey, everyone. I'm so glad to be on the Not So Silent Sisters show. Um, I can't wait to hear what we got to say. I know we got some songs to hate us, so this is going to be fun. Um, and once again, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming, for real. Like, this is going to be epic. I'm so excited. <laughs> Lady D, Lady Dilla Jones. Hey guys, I know I've, I've been like popping up all over your screens like randomly all the time this week, right? Like hopping on people's random chat. Check out my YouTube channel, um, Lady Diligence. I have a few videos over there, but I'm pretty much like book only. The show stuff, for the most part, I guess you'll see me on other people's channels. So thanks for coming and hanging out with us and talking with us. I'm really excited about the Battle of the Bastards. I cannot wait. And I'm just for the record, I am not a Sansa hater because I realize that I'm like, Surrounded by Sansa files. I am not a Sansa hater. I just take issue with some of the actions and some of the choices that she has chosen to make because I feel like she is a lot like Cersei. I feel like she's she Cersei-fied. I feel like, yeah, she learned the game from Littlefinger, but she learned most of the game from Cersei. And for me, I've been seeing little flecks of it here and there, and I just I can't stand it. So, okay, so just for the how do we talk all the time and you've never told me this and told me <laughs> that you feel Sansa certified? We'll definitely discuss that, yeah, for real. Like, yeah. <laughs> Damn, Daniel. Alicia. Certified. <laughs> you did make up a word just now. <laughs> it worked, though. It's a verb. AK. Oh, is she still away? No, no, I'm here. The, the damn thing is eluding me. Sorry. So, hi, folks. How y'all doing? Um, I'm off screen for a little bit during this segment. There's a uh, thing flying around my house bothering me, and I'd rather not be embarrassed by y'all seeing me, you know, fly all over the computer screen trying to catch it. So, we are here with the lovely T-Baby and Lady D, my girl, my sister, Lady Sphinx. North members will be joining us shortly. Let's get into this chat and dissect this episode. Yeah, so here we go. Unfortunately, the North Remembers is the backbone to this, this whole situation. So we're just going to have to wing it because she, she guides us and keeps our notes and everything. But we already know off top how the episode started. They were loading the, the trebuchets and launching stuff into Marine. Um, we just saw Danny standing on her terrace overlooking her city that she left and came back to. And, like, it's in all-out war slash siege happening and then she comes back inside and she looks at Tyrion like she went to work and told him to do his chores and he didn't do his chores or maybe he did most of his chores but like not one of them and she's like you're in trouble and he's like well I know I didn't do the rest of the chores but I at least washed the dishes he's like no I did something I know you can't tell but I did do something and she just looks at him and just glares at him and a lot of, I, I listened to a few reviews today. I didn't want to do too much because I wanted to be somewhat unbiased. But a lot of people like Judge um, Amelia Clark on her acting. I don't know. You know, I, 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 I feel like it's fine. 
you know, in, in tonight or last night in that episode, like she was fine. I, I didn't judge that. She's very stoic in there's not too much emotion happening on her face, but I don't really think there should be. For a young girl that's trying to be a queen, you probably just need to keep it straight and forward and just glare at people all day. So I, I personally really enjoyed the episode, that portion with her and Tyrion. I was just laughing when the bombs are going off, and he's like, maybe we should take shelter and blah, blah, blah. It was hilarious. So, And then, of course, he pulled the, oh, but your dad used to suck two card on her. She's had that card pulled a few times. So um, we'll go down the line and see what y'all thought about it. I'll start with T-Baby. What were your thoughts on Tyrion and Daenerys' reaction or um, interaction? Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, to be honest with you. Um, when, I, when I saw that scene, I thought back to when they first met. He kind of used the same tactic on her to, to not to humble her, but to to have like a point of interest for him to conduct the conversation and we kind of saw that also with um, Davos when they went to the baby um, Mormont and we also saw that again I'm trying to think because I this is so fresh off my head so I know I'm missing a bunch of scenes all together but I just I just enjoyed it I, I, I mean it wasn't like super important but she Danny already knew that once she left, they were going to attack. Tyrion said that when he was questioning her when they first met and said, you know, well, why do you want to go to Westeros? I mean, you know, you're better off here. And she was like, you know, I'll continue to protect them, but I got to go. And, you know, they brought up, like, you know, they're going to attack. So I thought that, you know, she kind of already knew. I think she's more pissed off at um, the fact that they did attack, not more so Tyrion. But I just loved it. Yeah, it seemed more like a pride thing. You know, like she wasn't really mad at Tyrion because she never scolded him or anything. She gave him that look like he was in trouble. But when it came down to it, she was like, yeah, so they're bombing us and I'm just going to go kill them all. And, you know, her rage was going out to the to the masters of the other free cities. So, um, Lady Diligence, what were your thoughts on that scene? I loved it because I loved Daenerys. And I loved it. She came first, like for me anyway, like what I usually do is I try to, seems like that, I try to make them continuations of the scene before. So I thought of last week, you know, like, okay, mama came home. Now it seems like everybody changed clothes. So I guess everybody got a good night's sleep, some breakfast and a shower, changed clothes. And then, you know, the nurse was in there with Tyrion like, so explain to me exactly what happened. And she, he explained it. And it didn't seem like she was necessarily angry at Tyrion, I do. I agree with you. It seemed like she was more just pissed off, like, you have the audacity. Like, you fools have the unmitigated gall to actually come and attack me when I'm Daenerys Targaryen. I have dragons. So it was, it, I just, I really love the exchange. Um, what it seems like to me is that Tyrion, I have to force myself, Tyrion is going to uh, end up being, like, her voice of reason, Right? Because she does have a little, she does have a little mad queen in her. She is kind of heiressy like. Come on, she was like, this is. She was like, you got a plan. She was like, this is my plan. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna kill everybody. I'm gonna massacre everybody. I'm gonna put them up. I'm gonna crucify them. Then I'm gonna burn down the entire city. Everybody. And he was like, no, no, that's not a plan. You can't. That's not a plan. You can't do that. So I think that. Tyrion is really like her voice of reason and Tyrion is going to be the person that because you think about it like it's not in the show but book wise like Daenerys is supposed to still be very young you know and she's got a lot of growing she's got a lot of maturing to do and I think that Tyrion is going to be able to do that for her so much better than a Baratheon Selmy would have been able to because he knows how to play the game and he's really good at it. Like, he, he just did. So I, I enjoyed the scene, and I look forward to Tyrion being the voice of reason because she was about to burn every day about it. She yeah. was. He's reigning in her mad queen, right? Like, whenever she's trying to go full Targaryen, he's like, oh, wait a minute, not so much. You know, and then she, and she listens, and I appreciate that. She's like, well, what do you say? And really, he's his counsel, and I think that's awesome. You know, I... We'll talk about that later with John because he does it too, you know, with Sansa, and I really appreciate that. I feel like it's it's it shows your character when you can be like, 
I'm about to burn everybody down. It's going down. And somebody's like, no, don't do that. And then you have to like humble yourself a little bit and say, well, what else should I do? Like I was ready to burn them all up. <laughs> um, Alicia Kingstone. Yes, my dear. I um, pretty much had the same thought as Lady D. Like, you know, she, everybody got to go to bed without getting a whooping last night. You know, D Danny still had the mom coming home from work and looking around like, the fuck did I tell y'all? What, 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 what is this nonsense? Why is the city on fire? So, you know, now and now, now you can tell that Grey Worm and Miss Sandy, they, they did what the, what the multiple kids in those situations usually do. He did it. It wasn't us. We we ain't we ain't do nothing because you see they weren't nowhere near that room <laughs> when her and Tyrion were talking. But you know, Tyrion he was nervous as well. He should have been because you know she 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 could have slapped the hell out of him a few times. But damn that fucking fly! I'm sorry y'all. Um, <laughs> damn, I hate bugs. I hate bugs. I'm sorry. I really really do not like bugs. Ugh. Anyway, okay. Tyrion gave advice. And Danny listened. And it's very good that he did because she was about to go full, mm, let, let's go burn everything, and that would not have been the answer. It would have sent the message, absolutely, but that's not necessarily the right message that should have been sent. And, you know, Tyrion's the hand of the queen. You know, he's, he's given the good advice like he's supposed to, and I think he will continue to. So I, I appreciated that scene. North remembers. Welcome to the situation. Do you see this? I'm the queen of the north. <laughs> this ends with an F. Um, do you have I, any thoughts? I mean, we're, we're, I'm happy you're back because you're our, our guide and I need you. So. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about that. It's all right. We just started on the first scene. We haven't gone any further. So um, tell us your thoughts on that, and then you can move us to the next place. First scene, um, I loved it. I am a Danny writer. I love that shit. I was waiting on the last episode. To, I was trying to figure out why she first, and so they gave us everything I ever wanted with her saying, I'm sorry, you must have misunderstood. I did not come here to surrender. I came here to accept yours. And her little smug face. I told you guys that she's not smug for nothing, man. That chick, she was waiting for them little baby dragons to grow up, and Drogon came back, like, um, put some respect on her name. I freaking loved it. I can't say it enough. I was clapping and jumping. Grey Worm did that little gangster move, throat slash, Godfather throat slash, double duo. <laughs> I mean, everything about that scene was like, yes, yes. And I love how the master said, um, you know, he's not one of us. I mean, that was a good, good decision on Grey Worm's part. If they're going to keep somebody to go tell the people, it's noble masters and let, you know, that little nobody dude, he kind of probably doesn't even want slavery. He's just going with it so he could be, you know, up jump, whatever. So I loved it. I mean, I'm probably missing some pieces, but that whole thing was me clapping and yelling like I was watching some kind of sport game. Okay. Okay. I didn't, oh, I didn't know we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah, I was Yeah, you. you say, oh, oh, because I was like, yes, that is like, no, you're you're getting this we whole. Can go there. Thing. Go there, too, baby. Just go. no, 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 no. I'm all scared. I'm scared. I'm just saying. I really enjoy this. Ladies, <laughs> so. I just want to say one thing for all you guys. Seriously, that's why we have Candace. You see how, like, detailed that intro was <laughs> compared to, like, two seconds ago? <laughs> Candace is the woman with the plan. She's the hand of the queen. She, she gets I just hear her <laughs> And she does the awesome stuff behind the scenes. And I'm just like, okay, but for real, we didn't go into all that, but we can. Like, we were just talking about Tyrion first meeting with Daenerys, but we can... Um, Y'all want to go all the way into Marine and just hash it out, or do you want to break it up? Let me know what you want to do. Let's just do it with Marine. And get I it. want to go all the way into it. Yeah, because the realness is happening later. You get this out the way. So I'll, I'll say my thoughts. I never knew I wanted so much dragon riding until I got all this dragon riding, and I was like, oh, my God, that's how they used to look, like the Targaryens, a tiny little speck on these giant dragons and they're like controlling them and and then when the other two broke out I was just like oh my god it's about to go down like I was too turned I stood up for 85 percent of this episode I was standing and like yelling at my TV like 
and yelling at my husband like, that means this, this, blah, blah. It, it was just, it was so exciting. In Marine and the North, it was just perfect. And this is why I still have faith in D&D, because I know they can do it if they put their minds and their money to it. They can do it if they want to, if they want to. Um, I'll let you guys go because I could elaborate forever. The North members, we're going to start with you because you were MIA for a hot minute. Spill it. Oh, did you already spill enough? Do you have anything else to say? Um, I, I, did, I was just going to finish the other piece since we're going to go all in Marine and everybody can cover all in what they felt about it. But that conversation, or, I mean, yeah, the conversation where Tyrion was telling her, I, I thought, please don't go mad, Aerys on us. Don't do it, Danny. Listen, and that was going to burn them all. So I was glad she didn't burn them all. Um, Tyrion said, don't be like our fathers. And she's like, I won't. And I was like, don't let his alternate plan fail, please. And his alternate plan was the bomb. And I think I'd skip. So that part I first said was epic how they played them out with the parley. parley. Um, and then the Asha Yara part. Do y'all want to talk about your pieces and then we do the Asha Yara, or should I just keep going? Because I, I think that was, I want to hear yeah, what yeah, everybody yeah. thinks. Yeah. Let's do it separate. Let's talk about our pieces and go, then go ahead. What hey guys, someone says that our audio is looping. Is anyone having an echo? Mm -mm. I don't have one. Anybody else? I don't can you tell who, who it is? Like Is it me? Can you hear me? We're good? I don't hear an echo from you too. Okay. I don't hear an echo from anybody. I asked the chat if they still hear echo. They said it's no echo. Let's keep going. Yep, we're good. Let's go. Boom. So we're going to continue on with um, Marine discussion, not going into um, Greyjoy stuff, just pre-Greyjoy Marine stuff. So uh, Lady Dilla Jumps. Okay, so pre-Greyjoy Marine. Right? So from the time with... All right. Bust it. I told y'all in my... You know, how I felt about the interaction between the narrative... Sorry. That's the baby. Uh, sorry. Ignored. But, um... Like I was saying, <laughs> you see, uh, I really enjoyed the... I really enjoyed the... I guess the conversation and the banter between Tyrion and Daenerys. But when they got outside, when she... When he said, well, I would like to suggest an alternate route or whatever he said. I already knew it was going to be some shit because it's Tyrion. So you know that one, it's going to be smart. Two, it's going to be effective. And three, it's going to leave you going, well, shit. And that's exactly what happened. They came out there. They were completely calm, right? The masters again, and it's like, why don't y'all learn? Like, y'all didn't learn from before when y'all was talking shit. She could speak high Valyrian and knew what you said. Y'all didn't learn before that she know like 10,000 links. You didn't learn before that she's a shit. You didn't learn before that dragons are dangerous when they were the size of cats. Now they're the size of freaking mountains. Like, you didn't know that this was going to be a problem. But fine, stick a pin in it. You didn't know it was going to be a problem. So they sitting there talking shit because they didn't know it was going to be a problem, right? And then Daenerys is like, no, but wait, you, you don't get this. Like, this is your surrender. This ain't my surrender. Like, don't you understand? And what killed me is that I saw Drogon flying in the background. Did y'all catch that? I saw him jump off the damn pyramid, do this shit, and fly around. So I'm like, so nobody sees the fact that she's dead ass doing this. She's talking to you and is not even looking at you. She's dead ass like... I would be concerned at what the Dragon Queen is watching fly about. Could it be a dragon, maybe? So, of course, the dragon comes, <laughs> and she hops on the back of the dragon, right? And the slave soldiers, because they're slave soldiers, they, they ain't even loyal, right? And the slave soldiers be like, okay, so that was just a dragon. That happened, right? So now everybody's looking, and she goes, and what does she do? She picks one ship. One ship, and I believe this came from Tyrion. This is not a Danny thing. I think this came from Tyrion. Takes one ship and is like, look, we need the rest of them, but I need to make an example. One ship, well, hootie hoo to the rest of the dragons. The rest of the dragons come up with the hootie hoo. And now you got <laughs> a freaking flying V, Mighty Duck style, of freaking dragons over the Bay of Marine. And you still aren't on your knees like, okay, wait, stop, stop. 
you still standing up. You you still looking like, well, maybe this isn't a problem. I mean, you know, dragon, what, what's the big deal? We got fire, like, you know, what, what, what's the big deal? So of course she she flies around, picks one ship, and is like, Dracarys, burn. Everything is now on fire. Everything is now burning. Things are being blown up. The whole nine, everything. At this point, Grey Worm's like, huh. And Miss Sande's like, hmm. And Tyrion's like, huh. So they start talking shit. Like, well, our queen says one of y'all got to die because, uh, you know, y'all broke the pact. Tyrion, real G, he like, we made a pact with you. And you broke it. So now we got to do something about that. <laughs> Missandei's like, yeah, one of y'all gotta die. So now they're like, yo, yeah, dude, take dude, take dude. And Grey Worm with his just ultimate hotness is like, actually, and then straightens up the damn leather. He didn't just, yo, do you understand the dopeness of this former slave slitting the throat of former slave or current, because they have slaves still, slave masters, right? Sparing the life of a slave seller. And then at the end being like, oh, ambitious is Italian leather. Like, get out of here! What? Uh, no, not the Italian leather, Daniel. Uh, Damn, uh, like, bitch, you see this? You know you see this. Yeah, you see it, and it's back blood on it. Because I'm just that bad. I loved it. I loved every single moment of it. It didn't stop. And then after he killed him, after he was like, what? I'm the shit. Here come Tyrion like the mini mother freaking godfather. He's like, yeah, now go run tell that. Go tell your people that you only alive because she left you alive. Go tell everybody that you only here by the grace of us. You understand? We are your gods. Go tell everybody. If you want to rise up, if you want to talk shit, if you even think about possibly having a dream next week about thinking about getting people together to retake Marine. Go tell them what happened when Daenerys Targaryen came to Marine with her dragons. Now run, tell that, and walked off on the motherfucker. <laughs> it was an A-plus scene, A-plus scenes for me. I loved it. The little hand on the shoulder where he was like, yeah, boo-boo. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Tyrion is literally standing almost half a head taller than this slave catcher, slave seller that sold fucking Tyrion. Literally. It's perfect. I love it. It was perfect. I loved it. I was talking for a long time to stop, but I, I loved it. Oh, no, you're good. Before like, anybody else goes, I just there, there's nothing more I could say that was more cool. Yeah, I was going to say, like, right honestly, we can move on. But. I'm good, yeah. That was perfect. That was perfect. I mean, do y'all have anything else to add? I just want to say how funny you are, because I was watching the show like, bitch, I got dragons. Like, what would make you possibly think that this is a negotiation for my surrender? It's like, they're fucking, they, it's one fucking dragon. I got three, but y'all forgot somehow, but have one dragon in the back and you don't see it. She's way too calm. I agree with you on that, but I was just, when those dragons came and they just burned everyone and they were just torn and then it wasn't the you know how Danny has her own music and she has the uplifting speech it was the one at the first but then Danny has that battle beat and when we heard that battle beat and them just blowing up everything it's just like you see all three dragons just going first of all I know it's never going to happen but how cool would that be to see dragon versus dragon. I just like, you can still do it, but I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there, but it was epic. It's kind of like, episodes like this is so hard to talk about just because I forgot that shit happened because I'm so into the battle, and it's the same thing that happened last year with Hard Home, but Danny is, she is a fucking baby mad king, because she, she when, when Brittany was saying it, it, it reminded me of Terminator, like, chill, Danny, like, let's talk about it. She's like, no, let's just kill him. Like, let, they talk too much. Like, they don't need to live no more. We're good. Like, let's just keep moving. I just, I love this in Brittany, girl. Yes. No, yes. they do, for real. But that dragon beat, I know what you're talking about. Because it happens, like, right when the dragon, like, burns somebody. It's like, da 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 uh, Is that the thing, you're, the one you're talking about? It's like, I can't make the sound, but it's just like a doo 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 
do, do, but it starts with that, you know, she'll sit there and she's like, Jedicatus, and it's like, Brrr. it sounds like gunshots almost, like in music, it's so awesome, like I have goosebumps just thinking about it. I had complete joygasms at seeing Daenerys riding a dragon, like, and actually controlling the dragon and like doing things with the dragon, because that's how I picture the Targaryens in my mind that, you know, fought wars and, and had control of their dragons, and they could pull up on them and, you know, go fast, go slow, burn this person, scratch that person, eat that person, you know, they had control. And I have a question for you guys. It, apparently, in the show, we're not going to get any explanation on how the dragon bonding works. Do you guys think we need an explanation, Alicia? You think they need to tell us how it happens, or is it just an organic, natural thing that just happens? I think it, it's just a natural bonding that they have. I mean, the dragons were mad. The the Regal and Basarian, they were mad that they got locked up, <clears throat> but they were still keyed in to Danny. You know, when she left, they were depressed. They weren't eating, so clearly they still had that connection, and as soon as shit started going down, and, you know, Drogon jumped down, flew down, like, hey, Ma, what's up? We gonna go burn these dudes right here real quick. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, so she jumped up and got on, then they stopped and paused for a little bit. He, like, sent the sent the magic call out, and the Siren and Rago bust through the wall, and I was like, all right, come on, y'all, let's go. And shit went down, and, I mean... I, I think it's just a for for or at least for the show purposes, it's just that like psychic internal connection, and I don't think it needs an explanation. I think they it it's been shown fine. I agree too. I don't think it needs to be explained. Like I just understand that it's a natural connection that they just have. North members, do you think they need to explain to us or you, any thoughts on the dragon epic writing, or any um, you know, your viewpoint on do we need to know how to train a dragon? I don't even know shit. I just know she trained his ass and he's, he's just burning stuff up. And I don't care how they're communicating. I don't care if she voted for the new. She had a dream of it. Shall we move on? I think Candace got the technical difficulties. I mean, she's kind of okay. I just, a few words fell out. But I heard you, I heard a majority of your sentences and then you saying, can we move on? So, but we should move on because I can go on about this forever. Um, I didn't, I didn't hear you. What, what I said, did I miss anybody? Lady D, she's good. She's got the puppy there. Okay. No, Yara? I can still talk. Yara? I don't want people to see me smoking a cigarette. I feel like I look crazy. Oh my God. Oh, boo. But, um, they said they couldn't hear you, Candace. You were breaking up, and I couldn't hear you either. So were you just saying okay. to move on? Yeah, I was asking if everybody spoke while I was out, and if, if you guys talked about the Dothraki rolling up on the scene. No, actually, not at all. T-Baby. T-Baby, turn. What the fuck, Candace? You can't go nowhere. Yo, I, what, I, you, what the fuck? You got to stay. Even if we can't hear you, just text me your thoughts so I can tell I'm, them. I'm trying to stay. I don't know what's up with the internet today, but I'm here. I'm, I'm going to keep popping back in if I can keep that. The chat people say they don't hear you, but I hear you, and I need you. Don't go. Don't go. Tea baby. <laughs> okay. Oh, I forgot all about them where they was just yelling and yipping and just going, and you see the harpies, and they just look like, what the fuck is that? And they just chanting, and then they just... I forgot all about it. That's how good. I gotta watch this episode again. This episode was so good. I just love the fact that you would just expect her to just attack with a dragon. She's like, no, I'm attacking with everyone. It's just so good. I forgot about that, but I definitely love when they were chanting um, and you could hear them. I don't know how to make the noise, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> Yeah, when they were doing, yeah, when they were doing that, then I was like, oh, like, I, I just loved it with the bells and everything. Ooh, like, the Mexican Call of War. Good. It really good. Yeah, I agree, and I, I totally forgot about the Dothraki. It, there were a lot of callbacks to Peter Jackson throughout this whole episode with the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. When I heard that that the background, I heard their sounds before you know they showed them when the harpies were still killing people. It made me think of like the drumbeat and chanting that happened in the Return of the King, 
right at the group that came in right after the Riders of Rohan came in. The guys that came in on the big elephants. That's that's what the 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 Dothraki screaming come out. And then when they showed them, and like you know we've seen the Dothraki fighting before, but never on this scale. Like the 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 Dothraki screamers. Now we know what that shit actually sounds like. Now we can appreciate why they're so fearsome. That was great. I still thought Dario could have got like shanked in the face accidentally by somebody's arc, but you know whatever. He was in the mix, so he still looked cool with everybody else. But yeah, that was a great, great intro for them. Even though it didn't show them doing a whole lot, we know they went through and wrecked some damn harpies and cut them bastards down. Can somebody tell me who are these random harpies killing in daylight and who are these random people that they're killing? Like, since when do they just roll up on people and shank the hell out of you brutally in broad daylight? I was lost. I was I was like, are, is this like a a group of people that they're targeting. It was just... It looks like, if, if you think about it, right, there are people from these three places, Volantis, Astapor, and Yonkai, who are supposedly funding the Sons of the Harpy. It would only make sense that if they launch like a simultaneous attack at the point of which the invasion starts. That's where That way there's an attack within the city, right? And an attack without the city. So now you got to deal with people in the city, and you can only defend one place, apparently, because of the way the city is set up the way that the streets are and the avenues and everything, you can only defend the pyramid. So that's a that's a fuck right there. Like, damn, so your people. And then you got to deal with everybody outside. So I think they were trying to just do like a two-front attack. And so those harpies are, you know, they're basically soldiers right now because they're being invaded by people who are supporting them. So I think that's really what it was more than anything. I, I agree with you, though. I was like, damn, they're just getting them at the gates. But at the gate, then that means that people were running. So what, were people running? And as people were running, they were killing people as they flee? It was so really that's even more fucked up. It doesn't, it doesn't. Is that me? Yeah. There, boom. You got it, girl. But there was, it was, it was really weird because, like, nobody else was around. It seemed like a group of people were traveling and maybe got caught up or something outside the gate. Um, North members... Did you have any thoughts on, like, the Sons of the Harpy just randomly, brutally mur murdering? Like, damn, they were, it was bad. Yeah, I think they were on a demoralization campaign. Free slaves take out people that might try to fuck against them once they win because they thought they were going to blow up, you know, launch all those fireballs and take down Marine. So I personally think they were just trying to kill free slaves and anybody who might support Danny. And I guess they could, they could tell who was free by the fact they know they're not from the noble families. And they were randomly killing a lot of people before. And so if they were waging war, I'm sure they were just kind of out there to make carnage and prove a point. T-Baby? Um, yeah, I agree. Plus, I think the show had to sh um, show us where the cow was, because it's like, okay, we see Danny, but where did you put all those people that was running behind you? <clears throat> Sorry. I'm, I've been yelling because I'm so excited, so I'm starting to lose my <laughs> But I think that's what it was. Um, Alicia, what do you think about uh, Dario leading the Dothraki? I felt like it was his rightful place. Like, it was perfect. I would not want to see him anywhere else. It kind of made me like that more. Fuck that dude. Still, I am not a Dario fan at all. He may not, he may or may not still be the leader of the Harpies, but he, what's the purpose of his character anymore, anyway? Outside of being Danny's, you know, bedtime friend, which, in my opinion, she's about to get a new one, so I don't think that's even, you know, he's going to be irrelevant very soon. So he, like I said, he can get accidentally hit by somebody's arc through, over the neck or something, and I wouldn't care. I'll just clarify for a second. I don't like Dario, but I feel like if he was going to be anywhere, like, it was good that she, like, put him there for that, that purpose, you know, like, to lead them because he's a savage-ass sellsword, so it kind of just fit, I thought. Brittany. I agree that it fit, but I thought something was a little, I thought a few things were weird about the scene, like, how many of y'all, if y'all see or you hear, like, horses, because trust me, like, you hear, you can hear one horse, 
running towards you. You can't. Now imagine dry bed, you know, it's not wet ground, it's not flexible, you're going to hear that. And it's all these, you hear it and you can feel it in the ground. You telling me you motherfuckers don't run? Excuse me for the language, but y'all just sit there and be like, we're not running. We're going to stand here and stare at the Dothraki horde that is heading towards us. Nobody ran, nobody hid, nothing. And it made me wonder, like, is that because you saw Dario at the front? Did you think they were coming to help you? Is he the harpy? But, you know, that's just some tinfoil foil out there. But I thought it was very strange. Like, how y'all just, I just, it doesn't make sense to me. You feel it. You can feel it in the ground. That many horses, you feel it in the ground. They felt it before they could hear it. So you felt it, you heard it, and then you saw it, and nobody ran. So, I don't know. Like, you don't have to be a genius for that, though. Like, I mean, damn. Like, you wouldn't run? I would run. All right. I'm just going to lay this out here. We have a 9 o'clock shutoff time. And we are at 8 o'clock. And we haven't even got to the north yet. <laughs> and me and Candace were talking earlier this morning. I called her on my way to work. And I was just like, dude, there's so much. We only touched on two locations. And so much happened. Just like, damn, Daniel. So... Um, if anybody has anything else to say about this particular area, we can definitely talk about it. But if not, we can we can boot scoot. Candace, do you agree with the boot scoot or not? Because the north is going to take up some time. Like, I need like. Uh, a whole are night. you guys going to talk about Yara? Yes, Yara. we we, we need to talk about my girl. Come on, man. Let, let, go ahead, because I know you want to. <laughs> did you forget Sphinx? <gasps> yep, I did that fast. Oh. That's Exactly what I'm talking about. Like, there's still so much. Okay, Yara, you know, some of y'all was on Don Willie's channel last night, but for y'all who won't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it again. That ass, though. Just, just putting that out there. Anyways, aside from Yara looking sexy as all hell, that whole conversation right there I thought was freaking great. Um, Tyrion's, his, his little back and forth with... Um, What's the, what's the name? Yeah, him. I thought that worked out really well. You know, Theon was a little punk when he was at Winterfell and, you know, talking shit to Tyrion. And I think he got his little comeuppance, but he did. He did, you know, take it like a man. You know, he threw it back. He said, you know, I'm not here to be king or offer you anything, but I'm my sister. She's the one who's fit the rule. I'm, I'm not. I'll, it is what it is. She's the one that you want to that you wanna help back. She's in charge. I thought that was great, and you know, like you could see after he said that, Danny got that that smile on her face, and cue the 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 eye sex between them two for the rest of that scene. You know, Danny, you know they they went they they had a little bit of a little tiff, but I thought it was cleverly worded, and I just I, I, all I saw was sexual tension, guys. I don't know, I have a dirty mind. I've told y'all, but that really really is all I saw. But I dig it because, you know, while Yara's way of life is about to change, you know, Danny said you can't do none of that reaping and raping and all that anytime. And I think also a lot of people are worried that, you know, when the Dothraki go over, they're going to start, you know, pillaging and raping and all that. I really think Danny's going to put things in place to where that doesn't happen. I mean... So the Ironborn, their way of life is about to change, and I fully think Yara is going to keep to that pact. You know, it, whoever doesn't want to get down to Iron Islands, they're going to just have to get the fuck out and probably get burned or cut down. Y Euron's probably going to be one of the first, either one. But, yeah, dude's freaking crazy and just kind of stupid. Like, he's he's this is where you definitely separate the book and the show because Euron is just, no. No, I'm not scared of this the show you're on at all. Book you're on on the, mm, no, I don't want no parts of that. But yeah, their uncle on the show is fucking stupid. Yara's gonna go back over there with Danny, helping back her, and then she's gonna in turn she's gonna help Danny take over everything that needs to be taken over. And I think there's gonna be some um houses joining, you know, where where they're concerned. If y'all know what I mean. So she shouldn't be afraid of his big cock. Not what you're saying. No, not not even a little bit. <laughs> not even a little bit. No. Well, I think. Um. Oh, go ahead. 
I was saying tea, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I did I did like that scene. Um, it's kind of like what Sansa was trying to do. Um, when she was talking to, uh, Liana, when she was trying to relate to her on a you know I'm a lord, you're a lord type of thing where it didn't work. But when Davos did it, it was because she she was like talk about my people and a common interest we had. This is kind of the same thing where you see um, uh, the two women exchanging where they're like, well, I had a shitty ass father. And then the fact that you have um, Theon saying, I'm not trying to get the claim she is. And she, I, she is the oldest, so she, Danny's already like, okay, you have the same like mind of what I'm trying to accomplish. The only thing I didn't like is that, you know, Asha Yar, or whatever you want to call her, you know, she wasn't really for um, doing that type of stuff anymore because she said it didn't get her her um, her house nowhere. So I didn't like the fact that she was down for raping and stuff. Like to me, that was stupid. I just don't I don't see a woman being okay with rape. It just that didn't make sense. But overall, I really did enjoy that. Yeah, I um. I, I caught that too, but I didn't mention it to anybody because I felt like I was just stupid and maybe I missed something. But I was like, I could have sworn because because there was so much irony in the books. She wanted peace, right? And she like had the pine cones and stuff. And then in the show, wasn't she like, I just want to kill everybody and just take over everything? And then she meets Danny, and Danny's like, peace and pine cones. And she's like, okay. So I was thrown off. I, I mean, I didn't. I never mentioned it to anybody and never even wrote it down when I was like making my notes because I was like, I must just have it wrong. I must be missing something because it can't be this drastic of a change. It's already drastic enough that they made Yara um, either bisexual or homosexual because in the books, she loves the D. D all day long, like straight up hardcore. Double D. Double. Fifth, fifth D all the time. But in the books also, Daenerys dabbles with the ladies, and they change that. So now I'm like, these two are totally eye-boning each other. So are they going to introduce Daenerys's bisexuality to Yara's new bisexuality or homosexuality? And that's going to be like a thing? Because that dude, like Daenerys was, she could barely contain herself. Like she completely creamed her pants talking to Yara. And I was like, oh my God, can you be discreet like at all? She was just like, oh, ooh. That lady is scene cool. is the only Jeez. reason I am forgiving that Yara nonsense from a couple episodes ago. That is the only reason. Y'all know I was not about that shit, but seeing this here, if, if Yara's gonna get with Danny, I'll give you that. I mean, and they brought up, oh, so you're not demanding marriage? Like, why would that even come up between two women that are speaking in this time and age? And Daenerys being the progressive law changer, breaker of chains that she is, she and she can't have babies anyway, right? <laughs> so you don't need a penis and semen. You can just have fun and, like, do whatever you want with whoever. So it makes perfect sense. She might link up with the freaking chick, Yara, and they become, like, queen and queen. Oh, my God. Lady D, are you there? Yes, I'm always here. Oh, I just, hi. Your little puppy. It looks like my nephew. Candace, doesn't that look like Napoleon? Yeah, that's my sister's dog. He's my nephew. He's like blood. Blood and blood. You guys want to go to the battle now? So wait, I want to call on Yara. Mm -hmm. I'd like to weigh in on Yara. Um, I think there was a lot of things about the scene that I really liked. Um, one, I feel that in the event that it would have been Theon asking for support for his claim for the throne, I don't think that she would have supported him um, because of that. I don't because of the marriage. One and two, I think that she was just already really feeling the whole having another queen in Westeros thing to get down. And then if you think about Dorne, then that's a third queen. And then if you think about Sansa, possibly in the north, then that's a fourth queen. And then that's just it's great, you know what I'm saying? It's a 
But then again, it could be a war of queens, so then the war of the four queens, so then you never know. But um, I also enjoyed how Tyrion seems to have some sort of, I, I don't want to say loyalty to Sansa still, but at least feeling, because it came up about the Stark boys. He made Theon pay for it in his, you know, in his face. Like, he made him answer for it. And I thought that was really interesting, too, because, one, she deserted you, <laughs> and you then ended up on trial and possibly could have been mur you know, possibly could have been killed because of it for the murder of Joffrey. And two, you're a Lannister, so really why do you care? But he, he does care and I think that shows that Tyrion is a different type of character altogether. He has a heart. And I really enjoyed that too. Um as far as Yara and Daenerys getting together and being queen and queen, that'd be awesome, but it can't happen because of succession. Like it's completely ruled out because of succession. Realistically, like even if she can have a kid, she's not going to tell nobody that. You know what I'm saying? She's just going to have to adopt or do something or whatever. So oh, you're, you're saying they would still get married, but she just wouldn't tell people that she can't have kids. Yeah, she would still, she, she'd have to. She'd she still to. marry a man. Yeah, like, I mean, she married uh, whatever his face in the books, right? She knew she can't have kids. The prophecy was already there. She's not supposed to have children. So... I, the the Yara and Daenerys thing, I don't think would happen anyway. But, yeah, I think overall, really good scene. I like the fact that Tyrion made Theon pay for it. I like the fact that Theon was able to stand up and be like, well, I didn't do it, so there, in your mouth, or whatever. And, um, yeah, good scene. That's it. All right. So guess what, guys? We're about to take it to the realness. We're going to talk about the battle. We're going to talk about the damn battle. But we have to start at the beginning. We have to start with the parlay. Candace? All right. Um, the parlay, let's get to the fun part. Um, so John parlays, parlays with Ramsey, his little smug little face. Ramsey's like, I'm not making any deals. Um, he's pretty smart in offering him the one-on-one -on -one combat. We've seen that happen before. And usually it's the losing side that wants to try to do that. And the person who knows they have the upper hand is like, I'm not going to do that. And Ramsey's right. John would have kicked his ass. Um, he denies it. John knew he was going to deny it, but he knew he would inflame him a little bit by even asking. And we get to the tent. Um, I'm just going to throw all that together so we can get to the battle. And everybody can talk about this parlay part. So um, Sansa and John go back, and they have a little bit of a debate about you know, had him forward and had a deal with Ramsey. And Sansa has said some of the smartest stuff um, in the last few episodes in that debate. She was coming from a victim place, this is what happened with her and Ramsey. And John was coming from a war place like this. Um, but they both had points. She was trying to tell him, this dude plays with us like toys. He's not going to fight like a commander. He's going to fight like this is a game. Um, so... I love that part. There was that split second where I thought Sansa was going to tell him that the bell was coming. And I was like, say it, damn you, so you guys can make a good decision here. Um, we'll talk about the impact of that later. But that um, kind of wrapped up the pre-battle. Davos out. He goes out in him and Tormund discussion how, how they both have faith in John now. They shouldn't have followed kings. And so we realize, okay, they have, they have respect for each other and a bond a little bit, and then um, Davos fine and Big Shireen. Um, and that was a sad little somber moment, and then the war horn blows because it's about to go down. And that's the synopsis of the discussions pre-battle, which I'll got. Um, all right, I'm going to go down the line. I'm just going to start. T-Baby, thoughts? Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I know a lot of people say, you know, why well, didn't Sansa say anything? But when you listen to what she was saying, she's like, you never thought to ask me. And she keeps warning John. She's like, don't do what he expects you to do because it's a trap. And she, I know I'm going to get so much slack, but fuck it. The thing is that you got to go back to, um, the episodes where she's talking to Bran, and Bran already put doubt in her head because she was saying how Davos went from one king that killed another, to, that killed his brother, to try to go. I forget exactly what she said, but she told her like, you know, what kind of man try uses black magic to 
um, kill his brother. So she associated Davos with that. So now she's like, okay, she trusts John, but not the people that John trusts. She does not know them. So I understand when people say she still should have said something even at that last moment, but John was not listening to her. Uh, it wasn't last episode, but the last time they were speaking when they were gathering, uh, John was saying, like, we got to do this now. He was doing the same thing uh, Stannis was doing where he was talking about the weather. He was like, we got to attack now. We might not get it. So I'm just like, look, we should go into the next house. And John was walking ahead of her before even listening to what she had to say. So he was ignoring her. So it wouldn't make sense for Sansa to give him information when he kept on ignoring what she's saying. She does know that this the Wildlands are his army. And she also knows that the Vale is not her army, that that's Littlefinger's army. And when you have to think about why she didn't um, accept it in the first place, you have to understand, well, what it means to actually take this army. Yes, it would have saved some, it wouldn't have been that many lives taken if she would have brought the veil in, but when you think about how the battle actually started, John fell for the trap because he brought, they had these, let me stop because I think I'm going far into it and I'm starting to talk about the actual battle, but what I'll say is that I really did enjoy Sansa stepping up and actually saying, you know what, if you were to listen to me, you would know that you can't take him lightly. Stannis did the same thing. They they underestimated him. John feels like, okay, I battled White Walkers. He's nobody, but it's not the same enemy. It's a different type of, like, Ramsey likes to play with your mind, and he knows that. So he's using, he's using your flaws and what people love about you against you to actually win this. So I'll keep, leave it there because then I'll talk more about when they started to actually charge. So one of the things I wrote down about this was Sansa telling John he plays with people. And she couldn't give him like a good example, right? So he couldn't grasp it. He was like, well, tell me, you know, wh what should I do? What do you mean? She's like, I don't know. I don't know about war. I just know living in the house with this dude, I can tell you straight up, he will get in your head and he plays with people. And he does things to, to goad you and to bring you into wherever he wants you to be. And she was exactly Lee right, because that's literally what happened. He used what he had against John to get John to break ranks and come way out where he was vulnerable. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But Sansa was trying to, it, and I love this so much because she was trying to tell him, but she still didn't know what she was trying to tell him. You know what I'm saying? Like she was like, I just know he's crazy and he does things like this. And, and John's like, well, well, what? And she's like, well, I don't know. As far as battles concerned, I can tell you as far as like raping people and torturing people, I, you know, I know that, but as far as a battlefield, I don't know what he'll do, but I can just tell you this much, he's freaking crazy and he'll bring, he'll set a trap for you. He doesn't fall into traps, he sets them. And what happened? Brittany. I disagree. And um, I think y'all know that I disagree. I I don't I disagree. And here is my few points in my rebuttal back. Right, one, it's a war. You should not be waiting for somebody to ask you how you can help them win the war that you ask them to wage on your behalf. In episode four, when Sansa came to the to the Night's Watch to Castle Black, you know, and they got the letter. Her whole thing is, a monster has our home and our little brother. We got to go fix that, right? And you basically forced John, who just died and was resurrected, to come back from the dead and have to go through an experience where he could die again. And you put his life in jeopardy. But we're not, we're not, I'm not going to go back there, but you, he was resurrected. This man is literally scared to death. <laughs> he, 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 he's, he's been brought back from the dead and you want him to go into a situation where he could die again and he's willing to do it for you and you're not willing to tell him that you have soldiers? I'm sorry. Like, she gets no pass from me on that. And I'll, I'll get back to the points, but that she has no pass from me on that. 
Okay, so additionally, you want to warn people and be like, oh, he's not listening to me, I think, the night before the battle. When she and he, when he and her had that argument out in the snow where Stannis had camped, and she was just like, you know, we don't have enough men. I understand why he got pissed off and turned around and was like, look, we got to do this now. We asked everybody we could, and no one was going to help us. He's saying that because in his mind, that's what he thought he did. You want to go and ask House Serwin? They're not going to help us. We sent ravens out to everybody, and nobody came back with anything. This was her point where she could have stepped up. Yes, he's pissed off. He keeps, she keeps saying stuff like, it's not enough. We need more men. It's not enough. We need more men. But you're not coming with any solution. And I just died and came back from the dead, and I'm willing to risk my effing life for you. And all you have is complaints and no solutions. I'm sorry. Like, she gets no pass. All right. Oh, oh, I just have to have at least 30 seconds of rebuttal. Candace, time me. Candace. Okay. I don't have my, I have, I have points. I was coming back to everything y'all said. Yeah, I'm down here. Yeah, let, let her, let her, let her. You're making points. I got, re we, uh, just go for it, girl. And, and then okay. got it. Uh, and then we're going, um, Leisha got it. And we're going, we're going to get this thing going. Go for it. All right, so there you go. She's like, we need more soldiers, but she never says where we could go to get more soldiers concretely. She's never giving them any actual answers. It's just stupid stuff after stupid stuff. Just, we need more soldiers. We need more soldiers. Who wouldn't be pissed off at that? Who wouldn't go off on that, especially after what he's been through? Additionally, I do want to point something out about Sansa, this last real thing, right? In episode four, she said, a monster has our home and our brother, we need to go get him, right? That's the whole thing. We need to go get him. By episode 9, she was like, Rickon is dead. Trust me, I know Ramsey. Well, if you knew Ramsey from the beginning, it was your opportunity, not opportunity, but your responsibility to make sure that he knew Ramsey and that everybody knew Ramsey. You didn't tell him about the rapes and the flaying. They just had rumors. You didn't tell him about them hunting people. Do you think he would have ran after Rickon if you would have told him about how he would hunt girls? You think Theon didn't tell her about that? You think he doesn't know about that? Do you think he would have ran out there if he knew? And additionally, she's a punk. She's a punk. Little Liana Mormont was out there with her with risk of death, and she's 11 years old. She was out there with risk of death, and she's 11 years old, looking at Ramsey with the stank face, like, ain't nobody about to swear fealty to you. And she's 11, and you trying to tell me that you ain't woman enough to be like, look, I got soldiers. Everybody is putting everything on the line for Santa, and Santa held back the Knights of the Veil, vale, not to save Rickon, because he was dead but to get Winterfell and to get power back because that gives her security. And she learned that from Cersei and Littlefinger. It is what it is. Like, she should have spoken up. She didn't speak up, and she gets no pass from me. I'm sorry. There were too many opportunities, and it was her responsibility to make sure that people were ready because they were waging a war on behalf of Sansa. And that's it. I don't have a microphone, but mic drop. Drops pen. She dropped her pen. <laughs> Sphinx, Sphinx is rearing up. I think Sphinx is hype and T's hype. She did make good points. I got rebuttals, but Alicia, let's hear what you guys say because I already know that Sphinx is going to go in. And then I want to hear what North has to say. And then we'll uh, get to because we're like almost hitting like 830 and I really want to hear everything. Honestly, but, we have we have to move on. We can't because my rebuttal it needs like two hours on its own. Well, if you don't want to rebuttal, please let me do it. I don't I don't need to well, rebuttal. You do tea. You do tea. Go ahead. Go so, T. Go. Ahead. No, because she you made very good points. Sansa did play this situation into something into a winning. Now, Laymon was out there, but so was Sansa because she was speaking directly to. Um, to Ramsey, she she was the one that stopped this whole like back and forth exchange, and she was like, you know what? Once she saw that um, Direwolf's head, that was that was the end. And then that's when she says, you know what? You're going to die. 
And once she said that she rides off, that's when I'm thinking she's trying to check to see when Littlefinger is coming. Because I don't think she knows exactly when he's coming. That's why she's trying to stall. But if you go back to that conversation before John and Sansa even started talking, they started talking about the whole plan. And John messed that plan up. Even if John was to know that this dude likes to hunt people down, if he sees his brother, he's going to try no matter what. Now, did Sansa use that against him? She did, but also if you go back, some I don't I want to say episode seven or four where they're talking and um that whole situation where they were talking about um gathering the houses. He says we John says this. John says we need Winterfell because we can't defend we can't defend the north with um because the white walkers and we can't defend the south with Ramsey. So he says there was no way. He knew that they needed Winterfell. So it was not just for Sansa. It it was part for that, but he's not just fighting for just himself, he's fighting for everyone. And then you can also say at the same time that why wasn't John willing to fight for his brother then, but all of a sudden now you willing to fight for him. They're both um dealing with it in the same way. It's is it fucked up what Sansa did? Yes, but Rob did the same thing. He sent people knowing that he was going in battle so that they can capture Jamie. Like that's just how war is. It is you can't be honorable in war and expect to win. And then when you think about the the plan that they had, John fucked it up the second he went out because they had set up the perimeter to have a fighting chance. So even if he had, let's say that she told John, and they all had the um the army, and they set up the second that John ran for his brother, that was the trap. All the arrows come in, and then all your men are starting to go because they see them. So he's now in Ramsey's formation. That's why we saw those um crosses burning. Because at first I was like, why wouldn't they tell us who the burning crosses were? But that's what it was. It was a trap, and he fell for it. He did not listen to Sansa. So I don't understand why. Sansa Sansa has to give this information to someone who doesn't listen to her because at the end of the day, it's also a survival of the fittest. Sansa has not died, John has, and I do understand that John has has just died and has to come back and it's not right that he has to take this on, but he stepped up and he did what he had to do that's used against him. So he put men's lives at risk when he fell for the bait and didn't follow the the plan that they had. You even saw Tormund when he started to jump. Tormund said, "No, like that's not what you should have done." Right? I mean, like I don't like Ramsey at all, but the way he set it up was brilliant. I'm just gonna do 20 yeah. seconds. You have to go on. 20 seconds. I'm just gonna say, Ramsey was randomly really smart. In the show, he's like epic, like this epic battle commander. He can like take out a whole army with 20 good men. He can manipulate minds and, and think what people are going to do. So yes, Ramsey won the mental war, and Sansa knew that. She tried to warn John about it. And it's not fair to say that everybody is dying for Sansa, because they're not dying for Sansa. They're dying for the Starks to take back Winterfell. So that's a, like a whole other thing. It has nothing to do with a person. It could have been Rickon or Bran organizing the situation. It's not for her, you know, like as a person. And she kept things from John and everybody else. But there's a reason for that, which goes way further than the um, 20 seconds I gave myself. So I'm just going to drop it off right there. But, you know, honestly, this episode, it gave me all I wanted from Sansa. All season, it really did, and we'll, well, we, I guess we might as well talk about it because we got, we have to go to the north. We have to move on, like to the well, battle, part, the well, battle. Part. I want to backtrack one, uh, or is it backtracking? Yeah, because we already started the battle. Um, Davos and Tormund, their whole little discussion. What did you guys think about that? I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Ask, ask that question one more time. So what did you guys think about Davos and Tormund and their interaction before the battle? Oh, I love I loved it because um oh, okay, so I loved that because they were also talking about um 
Davos was talking about Stannis and how he thought that he was the one that was going to help him. And then you have um, Tormund who thought that Mance was going to be the one um, fighting for a greater cause. And they were like, look at us fighting for kings and they're dead. And he said, yeah, well, John's not a king. And I was like, oh, yes, he is. And I, was, I just love that little exchange. And I was like, yes, he is. And I just love the fact that they just threw that in there because you have like a, a conversation when they're joking around um, – talking about that L, like I can give you some real strong stuff, not that watered down stuff, and then they just threw that little nugget in, and I was like, yes, I'm digging it. I enjoyed it. I did too. I thought that was so good, and it was good dialogue, and it, it kind of, we never really knew how the wildlings would blend, but I love Torment and I love him. There were some little things like um, phrases that he didn't understand of Davos, and somebody who else was telling him some stuff, and they had to keep changing the words. It was the war so I love that they kind of, yeah. And he was like trying to yeah. turn John, John. He was like, they won't be able to, to get around the other. They won't be able to take us from the side. Like, like you know. Davos, Davos was like, right, man. Stannis had demons in his ears. And then Tormund's like, it. do you need demons? And Davos was like, no, it's no, it's a figurative speech. And, and he was like, oh. <laughs> Do y'all have more on that? Because I think we need to kind of catch up to the act. Is it even possible? There's so much more that we haven't even touched on. And we talked about this, Candace. Like this morning, we yeah, were we like, said it, um, Daniel, we said it might be, this might be a two parter. <laughs> we haven't even want to talk about Davos. Yeah, I, I'm gonna... What'd you say, Alicia? You guys want to talk about Davos finding the stag? Yes. Let's discuss and link that also to the final scenes, you know, like mm -hmm. Davos after the battle. So, Alicia, thoughts? Yeah, um, yeah, your, your, your little challenge from last night. I remember that, madam. <laughs> How I thought that was going to end up with uh, Melisandre. Davos finding the stag was, you know, we, we knew it was coming. We, we, we saw that in the preview, but it was still so heartbreaking. Still so heartbreaking to see that. Just you know, he, he he you could tell on his face like he had an inkling of maybe what happened, but then he started looking a little further and he, you know, kicked his boot around, then he picked it up and he was like, Oh, this bitch right here, what the So it just that that rage just built and built and that's what he took into battle with him. There wasn't any calm or anything, no. He just knew he was pissed off and he needed to let out some steam and he did it. Uh, I just, uh, and, and as far as what may happen at, at, at the end with that, I like, I, I don't think he's going to be the one to kill her. I think he, he recognizes that business needs to be done. So he's going to let things get done first before she gets her comeuppance. Did you watch the preview for the next episode? I did. And my first thought, because I keep thinking back to that damn statue that George R. R. Martin had made, that blue Melisandre statue, and I'm thinking, you know, it, at the end of it all, she ends up, if, if she does end up with the Night King, I'm thinking her punishment may just be banishment. Just leave and go somewhere. And she runs up on him or Night King runs up on her and that's it. Let me get a hand wave. A hand wave from whoever wants to um, hit on this. You know the hand wave. We discussed it. Nobody? I do. I was reading through the chat. Can you repeat the question? I do. No, Brittany. You hear me? No. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Listen to her and then just expound on that. <laughs> Go ahead, Candace. Listen to who? You. Oh, okay. I had a lag. I'm sorry. Um, that part was really touching for me because I've been sad about it since Shireen got burned. I've hated Mel, and I'm not sure, even with her bringing back my boy John, I haven't forgiven her for that. Um, I feel like she's cold-blooded, and that's a scary character for me. And Shireen was such a sweetheart. And when she walks up with that little stag, like every time I watch that episode, I get emotional. Like I've never seen it before. And it just touched my heart heartstrings to remember her screaming for her dad and her sorry ass mother 
and nobody stops her from burning. And it is a little weird that that would, I like that they had to leave a little egg there for him. Just so sweet to her, and it was just really, really sad. Yeah, that random stag surviving, like, it was carved out of wood, so how does that, like, not get burned up? Tea baby, Brittany? Uh, no, I have nothing to say. I want to get to the heart of this battle now. just want to talk about this this battle. Me too. Yeah. Let's do it, son. Anybody else? Speak now, forever hold your peace, because we're about to go all the way in. Anybody? Let's do it. The freaking battle starts with the parlay. Why do people even parlay? It, it seems like... Wait, we did the parlay already. With Rick on? We, we, well, that wasn't the parlay. The parlay was when Ramsey said, I don't want to fight you one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. The part with Rick on was just the beginning of the battle. The old right, right. Okay. Don't okay. cross this line. Don't cross that line. Yeah. So lines were drawn in the sand and people crossed them. And then what happened is Rick on got killed. And I knew Rick was going to die. I predicted it. But after that third arrow and it missed him, I was like, oh, maybe they're tricking us and he's going to live. And they're like, nope, never mind. Haha. <laughs> he dies. God, it was so much worse that way. It was so much worse that way. Like, I wish that third arrow would have hit him. And then all the arrows hit him afterwards. I was just like, damn, they made it so much worse than it had to be. Alicia. Break on apparently never saw Apocalypto, so he didn't know to zig and zag, running from arrows. I was thinking the same oh, thing. I was like, grab and leave. <laughs> I was really sad about that. Ramsey's an expert marksman, uh, archer. Like he, he'll kill him. He's he hunts humans for fun. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I'm really mad at Tonks right now because for the past what, how many years? Rickon's been off screen. He's been being raised by a wildling. And damn it, Tonks, you dropped the fucking ball, man. How did you not train this kid to some type of defensive capabilities? I'm sorry. I understand he was a prisoner, so y'all got given up. He couldn't do anything. And for y'all that don't know, I'm calling her Tonks because that same actress is who played Tonks in Harry Potter. And so that's what I remember her as, not Osha. So oh. you didn't know things? Come on, man. Anyway, back on topic. I was like you. I, I did I did think for a second, just a split second, that maybe, maybe, like at the end, he would finally, like, dodge a little bit out the way and the arrow would miss. But, you know, no. He, 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 he died. The death was coming, we know. And Ramsey's trick worked, you know? That was to get John out of his head and to make him rush into shit just like Sansa told him not to. You know, that, that one thing, that, that one thing that she did say was good. You know, he should have listened, because, and I see you, Lady D, I see you, shush, just wait a minute. If John hadn't have done that, and Torment had even tried to, like, tell him, no, stay, don't, don't fall for it, don't run into it. But what happened? It, it just, it, the whole thing fell apart. Now, they fought hard. I'm not, I'm not saying that. They fought hard, but uh, the beginning got, the, the start of those, that battle just got completely messed up with John and his feelings, and I understand why he was in his feelings, though. I really can't say that had I been in a situation like that, I probably would have reacted the same way. That was, that was my little brother. So why would you try to say Being in the feels, like, hello, little brother that you haven't seen for years just dies in front of you. It's fine. But it, he just fell into the trap. Like, you can't judge him for that trap, because that trap was was perfect. It was set up like, damn, this dude Ramsey... I guess he's like on some some Stannis stuff. He like had it lined up. He was like, yeah, I'm gonna draw him out with Rick on, and then the archers come and kill the horse. Like he had it all lined up. Lady diligence, spill it. I'm I put myself on the moratorium. I have nothing else to say. Else to Stop say. it! Stop it! No, no, not accept your resignation, madam. You tried me. Oh, like the, the battle. I'll talk about the battle battle, like the... Oh, with the... Okay, okay, cool. Okay. All right, so nothing about the parlay slash... Not the parlay, but the um, introduction to the battle? 
Uh, let um Nork speak because she's having um internet connections. Go ahead, Norky. I I am. It's a little iffy. Um, um, shoot, I'm trying to look at my notes and chat and hear y'all at the same time. So the battle part. So super sad. Rickon gets the arrows. Uh, the showrunners made sure that we knew he was dead. And then the flips the script and he's like, "Die! You will die today." And it just got so bloody and gory fast. I mean, bodies were... i got to rewatch this again. Bodies were piling up so fast, I couldn't even figure out what the hell was going on and who was who. All I kept looking for was don't kill John. Is Tormund still alive? Is one one still kicking ass? And, you know, the cinematography, the action, the horses, that powerful slow-motion scene of... Those horses charging forward was like movie. Loving that scene. Watch it when we get done. I love that part. It was like he came out. Like I don't care. Go ahead. I think I'm robotic now. It's okay. I think we got the gist of what you were saying. <laughs> um. Who did I hit on yet? Did I get everybody? Uh, I'm not sure if I said it, but I love the whole... Like, even... It sounds messed up, but sometimes you gotta walk out... You gotta look at the situation for what it kind of is, and even though I didn't want John to fall for that trap, just the, the thought that he did set that trap, and how it happened, it was just... It was... I, I was like, ah, oh, this is really bad. Like, don't do it. And then the, when he... We all knew Rickon was a goner. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, no, he just has a good card. I won't say that, but I'm, I'm with Brittany. I, I just want to get to the meat of it now. Let's do it, because honestly, that's the juiciness. And I'm just going to talk about my juiciness. That freaking single shot of my boo fighting where he came up off that horse and he was just like, ready to just sacrifice and he's like damn I should that's what I saw in his face was I should listen to Sansa I came out here crazy and let my emotions get the best of me he never even looked back to see if he had help all he did was see what was coming he was like fuck it show belt off I'm just gonna fight till I die and I was like and then his cavalry came and pulled up and I was just like oh my god <laughs> like they got there right on time and through the whole battle sequence that long single shot he's about to die like 25,000 times and every time somebody comes like they're just like swoosh like they're defending him before they kill anybody else or before they defend themselves they're just like Jon Snow make sure he's safe make sure he's safe he's safe and I was just like oh my god they are all over it. And this was way before the veil showed up. Like, I was too turned before he even got buried under a pile. That initial sequence had me. Like, I was done. I was so, like, I'm complete. With Danny riding dragons and John getting his testicles back, and they got put back in the ball sack. And then he was like fighting, like, he had them in the ball sack. I was like, yep, I'm good. I don't even care what else happens. So I'll stream down the line. I'll start with AK first. At least shot. Testicles are back. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm not going to talk about testicles, man. <laughs> but that that battle sequence, oh man, that was just bloody brilliance. Yo, the, one of the parts that I love. Did y'all see that horse that just came and smacked that dude in the face? Oh my. God, I was like, yeah. like I, I did a live reaction with me and my little brother, and oh man, like I think we were yelling stuff throughout that whole sequence. It was just awesome. I did mess up, and I thought that uh, Small John was Car Stark, but you know, that's neither here nor there. One thing that, I, and I, and this is another reason I need to do a rewatch. One thing I did get confused about was when John started getting bodies piled on top of him. Was he pushed down? By Small John, or did he just happen to like trip and fall back, and then bodies just started piling on top of him from there? 
I, I, I don't know. That part kind of confused me. But, you know, he, he, he fought and he got back and clearly that shit was hectic because he had to take several breaths before he could do anything and move anywhere. And I got so scared for Tormund. Oh, my God. I kept that. That's who I kept checking for was John, Tormund, 1-1, one, one, and what the hell Davos was doing. Those were my, my main focal points. When Tormund started getting beat in the face, I was like, no, no, y'all do not kill my d and I will come through this fucking screen if, man, just, uh, and then the, that, that final shot that, like, looked like it dislocated his jaw, I was like, oh, my God, Tormund's about to die. Oh, my God, Tormund's about to die. But, th- but then he didn't, and he shanked that little bastard, and I could not have been fucking happier. Could not have been happier. Not so much the shanking. How about the fact that he bit the dude's like carotid artery out? Like the whole side of his neck half face which is gone and I was like yes Tormund yes and I know again I seem like such a bloodthirsty person but yeah, you're crazy. that's what the, he's a wildling damn it that's what the hell wildlings do when they fight. I, I, I think he handled himself very well and I'm so glad <coughs> excuse me y'all so glad that he was one of the first ones with one one to start running towards Winterfell once they got over that huge pileup of bodies that happened there. Just oh man, man, he just full wilding on him for sure. Like the biting out of the throat, I was just like, oh snap, son. Uh, Brittany, thoughts? We started with something else, but we went to somewhere else. So you know, we'll just discuss thoughts on the actual. The whole battle in itself, because God, it was so much. It so was. I, I'm gonna be really quick, and I did have something to say about the um about the parlay, and that's that's it. I just love Leon and Mormont's face. Like that was that was awesome for me, and yeah. So the battle itself, after John ran out, after seeing you know Rickon run towards him because he wasn't mentally prepared what would be the Jedi mind freak of seeing his little brother run into the middle of a field and then get shot by an arrow because apparently that's something that this guy does often. After that happens and the war popped off, it was crazy. It was crazy. My favorite, my best part, my favorite part was Davos. It's like Davos instinctively knew and so did Tormon. It was like a connection. Like, Bing, you see what's happening, bro? I see what's happening, bro. Get ready to charge. Get ready to charge. Like, he was just on it. They were on it. They were like, Tom was like, no, don't, okay, well, get ready, everybody, everybody started getting ready, it was great, um, I, I really liked it, it was a really powerful scene, when everybody rushed out there, I was like, oh my gosh, it's crazy, because I knew that Ramsey wasn't going to stop firing, I don't know how I knew, but I knew, I was like, he's not going to stop, he's not going to stop, he's not going to stop, and when he just kept notch loose, and they kept doing it, and then Davos was like, no, don't do that. We're going to kill our own men. I was like, that just goes to show you. Like, there is military strategy, and then there's just straight up sacrificing people for no reason. He is a complete monster. It's amazing to me that the majority of the people who survived the battle were actually wildlings. That tells you something about these people um, defensively and just, just fighting-wise. They may not be technically trained, but obviously they get down because it seemed like everybody with a shield and armor was on the ground and the people that were rushing Winterfell and took it back over were all wildlings. For the most part, I saw survivors as wildlings. Um, um, of course, let's get into the fact, fact that John was basically a freaking ballerina with a sword, which is great. He was just like a monster, but with like toe shoes on, just ah, killing everybody, but I'm light on my feet, do a backflip down. Oh, everybody died. Arrows. Not me, though. Ah! Like, he just came. Ah, uh, stab this guy. Oh, you're not one of mine. Stab one of these dudes. Like, it was great. He just basically kept everywhere there was a body in his way. He was just killing, and I almost felt like, okay, is he looking for Ramsey, or does he realize he's not on here? I fucked up. I'm just trying to kill people now. And I think that's what it was. He was just trying to cut his way through. You know, and things got the way they got, um, and then the veil showed up because apparently it's cool to do that because they were at Molestown, and I, if you look at a map, you see how much distance there's in between there, so it's not like they weren't there for a while. But anyway, so they came, and they routed everybody, and that was great, and then John made eye contact with Ramsey, and you knew that it was going to be on. Like, you already knew it. When I saw him get up to the top of the pile, I was like, he's going to kill him. 
he is going to chase him down, and he's going to beat him to death with his bare hands. And that's exactly what he did. He looked at his boys like, Tormund, one, one, what's up? And it was like Destiny's Child, but completely wrong. Like, but you could hear, like, the music going. Like, it was totally wrong. It was like, independent. Like, they got in formation, and it was crazy. So oh they God. just ran got up there, got up to the top of the hill. And I felt I was so happy because I was on those predictions. Like, look, he one one's not stabbed up. Look, guys, like I was trying to be like, please, one one, if anything, one one. And then he made it through. And when that when that thing I like I wish you would have heard the scream that came. I I just wanted him to kill him. Please, like John, please kill him. Kill him, just screaming, kill Ramsey, like kill him, kill him, kill him. And then John, in his infinite fineness, got the shield and was like, I'm fine. And was just like, he was like, oh, I think we should fight one on one, but I'm a bitch, so I'm going to go ahead and get this bow and arrow. Bop, John was like, I'm fine. Bop again, I'm sexy. Bop again, who you playing with? Bop, bop. And then the beatdown was just happening, and it was great. It was like, wow. You know, I haven't seen someone getting beaten this badly since I used to take the six. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is a really good beating. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, at no point did I think John stop. I was just like, keep going, keep going, and keep going, and keep going. But then he saw Santa, and he realized, you know, I can't kill this person. This isn't for me. She has to get her revenge. And I respect that, but, you know... He could have got a couple kicks in the nuts or something. Like, he, he shot one one in the eye. Like, come on. It's the last freaking giant. Like, come on. We could have something, but I, it was good. Overall, I love the battle scene, and I love this episode. one one almost made it, man. And I said it while I was watching. He's going to go down, but he's going to get that fucking door open, and we're going to fucking end this shit right here. What one one y'all, rest in peace. Rest in peace, man. Yeah, I love uh, that part. I, when one one kicked that door in, it was just so epic. I'm sorry, T. Go ahead. Oh no, um, Kansas uh, saying she has to go, so I didn't know if she want to say goodbye or anything. Um, before yeah, I said anything. Yeah, I was trying to wait for Chris. I was gonna wait for Sphinx to come back, but I'm not sure where she uh <laughs> where she went. Um, but I'm sorry, I do have to go. And this is so epic, and I enjoyed talking with y'all about it. I, I'll finish the rest of it, and sorry, I'm missing the questions for the people in the chat. But um, this episode was great, and I can't wait to see what else you guys have to say. Bye, Candice. Bye. Bye, ladies. Huh? You leaving? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I got. I gotta go. She's gonna go ahead and speak. Okay, so. I'm with Lady D on this. I loved, love, love, loved everything. The action. I didn't realize that when he, uh, one one pulled the no, yeah, before he no, I'm I'm jumping ahead now. Okay, so one one when he uh, kicked the horse, I didn't realize that it was no head on the dude when he was riding by. I was like, wait, he's, he don't have no head. And I was like, what? I love the fact that uh, when he was running and you saw the arrows almost hit him, I love the fact that the horses were, like, crashing on each other. I cannot tell you how much joy I got out of it. When John got in it, he's all soaking bloody. And it might be weird that I was attracted to that, but he looked good. He was soaked all bloody. And he was looking at him like, I am going to fuck you up on site and then when you actually get him face to face and Ramsey is a bitch cause now it's like I can't do my tricks he already knew that he was gonna get that ass whooping so he's steadily doing this one I'm like why don't you get like a knife and at least start you know you would have had maybe an ounce of a chance not really but I love the fact that he had his um shield and he was going at it and the fact that he was just he was so relentless just beating him and beating him. And I'm just, like, yelling, like, knock his ass out. Keep going. Keep going. And then he stopped. And I was like, no, just keep going because you need this man dead. Like, I wasn't even thinking about 
Sansa being able to be the one to kill Ramsay, even though I wanted it to happen. But at that moment, I just wanted him to keep going. Like, he was smiling when he was getting his ass whooped, and it reminded me of the Joker. And I was like, people like that went, this is a rule of thumb. Don't fight people that smile. When they smile when they're fighting, they're batshit crazy. They enjoy this shit. You can't, you, you're not going to win this, so you got to just walk away or end it. So I love the fact that, I love the fact that John did let Sansa finish it up, but that battle, and then when he, the bodies, like you, you don't even realize that when they're climbing up to get to the other side, that it's bodies they're climbing up on, and you're like, the way that they shot it, you felt like you were in there, and I'm just like, how the fuck can you deal with this? And then you realize that Ramsey is so cutthroat that he was shooting arrows, and he didn't care if it was his man or John's man. He was like, I just got y'all in there, and, and that's when I, I heard Dabo say, you know, we be shooting our own men. And I was like, that's that's what I mean when I say you can't be honorable when you're fighting war just because you have people doing tactics like that. Not saying I agree or whatever, but it was just so good. And then you got that ending when Sansa's feeding his fucking dogs to him. I loved it. I love the I, I I will say I don't understand how she knew that he didn't feed the dogs in seven days when she left by then. I don't know, but the fact that she she was about to walk away when he the dogs were feeding on him, but then she came back and she looked at it and I was like, yeah, because that's what your father did. To, well, I don't know if he told her that, but it's just, you know, his father did teach the kids that, you know, you got to look the dude in the eye and hear their final words. And and Ramsey's such a bitch, he's still trying to fuck with Sansa, but it's not working because she shuts it down when she says, you will no longer exist. Like, no one's going to remember you. And she just, I love the fact that John let Sansa have it. I think oh, I, I oh. made a whole other episode just for Sansa epicness. Alicia, I know you have something to say. Speak on a child. I'm just wrapped up. She got me pumped up. T-Baby pumped me up about Sansa, and now I'm just like. Just a quick interjection, and then you can go. Um, in the chat, we have 37 people watching and 40 likes. So no thank, you. thank you, folks, for showing love. We appreciate it. Are you serious? There's 37 people watching? And 40 likes. What's wrong with you people? Get that. We love you. Thank you all. Go ahead, Sphinx. Damn, I'm, wrapped I'm, I'm wrapped up in these watchers now. I forgot what I was going to say. Like, that's exciting. That's over, like, that's a lot of people. <laughs> Thank you guys. For real. Thank you for watching. Even if you're not in the chat and commenting, I see the count and... Yeah, that's awesome, crazy. It means a lot to me. It's <laughs> We just like to talk about the same thing, and I enjoy that. And I enjoy talking about Sansa Stark. Mm. Mm. Okay, you guys, just, I'm going to have a minute. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do my thing, because honestly, it's been years and years, and I haven't had a chance to do my thing. Can I do my thing? Can I have my moment with Sansa? It's cool. I'm going to do it anyway. <sighs> it was just so epic. I can't even, I can't even find the words. I can't because she wrote, and I know people give her a hard time. You didn't tell John about this and blah, blah, blah. I have reasons for that that I'm not going to go into here. But for real, when they're in the parlay, and Ramsey drops Shaggy Dog's head. Sansa looks at that thing and looks up. And Ramsey's like, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. She says, no, Lord Bolton, you will die tomorrow. That's all I need. I was like, she's, she's about to get it. She's about to get it. And John's beating his head into the ground and sees Sansa. And he recognizes, oh, Shit, like, I'm sorry. I got caught up in my own Rickon dying, one one dying stuff. I'm really pissed. But this is this is your deal to make. This is your death to, to you know, your death to do. And he, he stopped. And after, you know, they bring Rick on in, he says to take him down to the crypts. And...
he walks off to maybe go take a shower, I hope, and Sansa's like, John, where is he? I was like, <laughs> she's about to kill the hell out of his ass. I was too turned. Like, I completely was standing and jumping and yelling and screaming. She said, where is he? Where is he at? I'm about to go get him. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. But this is the one time I've ever been able to gush and gush about Sansa. I'm not going to go on anymore. I'm just going to leave it here. I'm just going to stop it. But for real, damn it. Damn. Sansa did that thing. She made me proud today. She made me proud as a Sansa supporter. I don't even have any other words. Like I want to, I want to talk about it more, but I just like have nothing else to say because it was just perfect. The way she walked off with that smirk on her face after she fed him to his own dogs. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Okay. Let me get back to the uh, focus here. Let me get back in the discussion. You guys go next. Lady D, she can't go anymore. Stop it. No, I guess she has to say. Do you have anything added uh, towards the end when Ramsey died, or is it just no? Look at Brittany. Look at Brittany. Go ahead and say it. Um. I thought that what she did to Ramsey was totally appropriate and great. The only thing she could have possibly done, you know, is like, I don't know, chop off his penis with ice, but she doesn't have ice. So I think that she did the best that she could. Honestly, no, he, she raped her repeatedly for months. You chop it off. You Lorraine a bob at him. You put it in his mouth, and then you put the dogs on him. But other than that, I think she did great. I think that the dark Santa thing really works for her. I really do. But I think that that grin isn't just, oh, I killed Ramsey. I think that grin is so reminiscent of Cersei to me, but whatever. I think that grin is, oh, I killed Ramsey and check freaking mate. I have the North back. I'm basically the queen in the North. We just got to secure some stuff. I do have an army. We're going to be okay. She's not thinking about Beyond the Wall and all that other stuff that John has probably told her. But I think that smile is more of a checkmate, not just I got Ramsey, but I got the North back in a way. And I think that's great. I think it's awesome for her. Um, I don't hate Sansa. I just hate some of the decisions that she's made. But it was a pretty awesome scene. There you go. I completely agree with that. Totally agree. That <clears throat> that smile to me was that is the, the true birth of Lady Stark right there. That was when she fully came into her own. The way she looked that asshole in the eye as the dog took the first bite into his face. And I'm glad that they played that, that scream because I wanted to hear that. Because you would think with a character like Ramsey, he's just going to continue to talk shit. But that one time, that is the first and only time and the perfect time for them to show it. That's the only time we've ever seen Ramsey afraid. The only time we've ever seen fear in his eyes. And I loved it. I loved it. And she stayed true to her father's lessons. The man or person in this case that passes the judgment must swing the sword. And she handled it. I wanted John to like pull his throat out, but you know, I understand why he didn't. And I'm glad that Ramsey got the ending that he did. Per Sansa. Good job. All right. So when I want to have my let's talk about Sansa discussion, are you guys down to come? And we can just like really hash it out because it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, whenever. And I'm just teasing when I say Sansa hater, you know. So, but, but I will say that I'm with you. I, I was saying in previous chats, like, I would love for Sansa to flay his penis and then feed it to him. Just just because I would do sick stuff if if I was in her position, I would make it last, like, maybe tie up and have, like, one finger be bitten, and then, I don't know. She could have took it further. She she didn't, but, I mean, I'm with you on there. Like, let's get sick since he want to get sick and play his game, but, I mean, I'm glad that we saw 
we saw the actual bite that took in the fear. It, I, I mean, it was just good. Like, like I said, when John was like beating him, I wasn't even thinking about you know, oh, let Sansa have that. I'm like, just keep going, cause in my head, because they shot it so well, you're right in that moment. You like, it's kind of like when you're fighting Mortal Kombat. And I'm really bad at it, but you know how like when you fight and then like someone get down and they cheat and every time you get up they hit you with the low cut or the uppercut so you can't you can't get up. I felt like that's what he should have done. Like the second he get up, he's gonna do some crazy shit. So I was like, no, just keep beating his ass. But I have to give John credit because I love the fact that he was strong enough to hold that anger and just kill him and be like, you know what, this ain't mine. Even though he does have just as much right to kill him, I, I still like the fact that they did that as a team. So that will say a lot about John's character. But I just I love the fact that they ended it and that she was there. She, you know what? I will say that she looked like she enjoyed it a little too much. And the fact that Ramsey said, "Well, part of me is now in you or with you," I think it's the part where she's going to be a little bit twisted. Like she'll probably. Like, we saw how Daenerys showed signs of, like, the Mad King, but Sansa showed signs that she enjoyed it. And I wouldn't be surprised if she starts to be into that sick shit because of what happened to her. So by no means, I think Sansa's perfect. I just love, I love what happened. Yes, you're spot on. And I felt that, too, when he said, I'm a part of you now. Like, you can't kill me because I'm a part of you. I was like, he's talking about in her head, like he did reek, like we are connected and you can't shake me. But she was like, yeah, not so much, because die, bitch ass. Go ahead, um, Lady D. Brittany, nothing to add? Nothing else to add? Oh, I couldn't hear anything, so I was like, what the heck? Um, nope, that was... That was it. Like I um like that was that was it. But Sansa is certified. Like I I'm going to prove it. I'm going to go through this. I'm we'll going talk to about prove it. it. Bro, like, we will we'll work this out for real. I love my girl, but I'm not completely biased. Like I know when she messes up and when she's just fails. You know I get it. So I'm not just like a crazy fanatic, but I might be. But it's cool. We gotta go on to questions. Alicia, you got the questions, yo? We have like ten minutes for realsies. You wanna do a, a rating real quick first? That's easy. That's a ten. Ten out of ten. I mean, do we? I was like, do we have to? Like, that's I was like, like, do we really have to rate this episode? I, I came into that knowing that Hard Home was my favorite, and I wanted a hybrid of Blackwater and Hard Home, and that's exactly what I got. Like, I loved it. So I didn't. It seemed like that's a given. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty obvious for me. And we didn't even get into like the nitty gritty of the battle, and maybe we can talk about that at another time. But it, the epicness of this episode is unsurpassed, especially on television. Like, they, they did some other stuff. This was some brand new stuff. And not just the battle, but the dragon. Like, 10 out of 10 plus 10 plus 10. Brittany? Litter. Brittany, what you got? Can you A hear smile. me? A Brittany. smile. You're muted, Brit Brit. Is she frozen? No. No, she's not frozen. There she is. I echo. I don't want to echo, but I was just saying, yay, dragon. Like, yes. I was so happy. I was like, look, they're flying. Look, there's fire. Oh, she's riding it. Oh, there's fire and she's riding it and they're dying. Oh, it was great. I loved it. Weird. I literally did that same thing. I was like, she's riding the dragon and controlling the dragon and like doing things. It. All I want is to see like Targaryens and dragons and how they used to roll. And this was just a callback to that for me. I was just like, oh my god. She walked up on his wing, you know, like upstairs. <laughs> like she's walking up some stairs and then mounted. And you know, they like the connection. Like, okay, I'm ready. Let's ride out. We'll talk about that another time, but Alicia, questions, please. Agreed, agreed. I do think that, that that's a great way that they've shown if they wanted to, they could do the Dance of the Dragons. But let's see. 
First question from AU Pack Mule. Why doesn't one one use a weapon? I wondered that myself. It, like at the end, they showed him picking up one of the shields and just like swiping cats and clearing the field. Why did he not do that in the first place? I I, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't I don't understand how people try to try to make sense out of the show. <laughs> And I feel, you know, I don't, I'm not knocking anybody, but for real, like, I could not make sense out of the show, like, from the first episode, so I, I just gave up. If it was in the books, he would freaking have a total tree. Like, that's what they fought with. They didn't make weapons. They just grabbed books, not books, um, sticks and, and uh, trees and trunks and fought with that. But this is Game of Thrones and D&D &D and... Damn, I wish I could have an answer that makes sense, but I don't. T-Baby? Um, I was paying attention to the chat. What was the question again? I'm so sorry. Why do you think no. what, you didn't use a weapon? Oh, because that made sense, and you know how D&D are sometimes, that logic. What I said to you? <laughs> I mean, that, if you're in battle and you're a giant, I'm pretty sure you're going to pick up a tree or two because you, when you think about it, when he was knocking a people out, he could have probably knocked out like half of the people with the, the, the shield up. So yeah, that makes sense. So that's logical, but you know, sometimes D and D like to go to imagination land. So Brittany. I was upset because, as you know, I was really hoping, you know, that woman would be okay. And then when I saw that he didn't have a shield, I was like, he's fucked, isn't he? Like I knew. That's when I really knew. I was like, there's no, he's fucked, isn't he? Like I started holding on to hope throughout the battle, like, no, he's going to be okay. No, it's going to be all right. And he kept making it and making it, but I knew he wasn't because it didn't make any sense. Additionally, like tactically, Having a giant with at least a shield, like if you guys created some type of shield, like a raft as a shield or something like that, he could have not only shielded himself from a barrage of um, arrow fire, but he could have shielded like half of your freaking art, like realistically, like how many people could he have saved with like a shield or some type of weapon or fire, like anything, but they're just like, no, go ahead, run out there to your death, it's cool, just do this. Just do this and like just die. So he did, and that yeah. I wish he did have a weapon, but I don't know why. It just it makes sense. So like T Baby said, it makes sense. So they weren't gonna do it. Indeed, indeed. All right, next question, and I like this one. It's from Eli. <clears throat> did you ladies notice how long John stared into the fire in Mel's tent? I may be reading into it a little too much, but do you think it's possible he was seeing something? Yes, Eli, yes. I wrote it down. I watched it like five times after the first night last night, but I watched it like five times today, and he was completely staring into it, and it was he was weirded out by it, and then he walked off like, this was weird. Yes. Did anybody else catch that? Anybody else? I missed it, actually. I missed it, so I'm going to put a pin in that and make sure I look for that when I do a rewatch. It's for real. He was standing right next to her, and the thing was right there. She was sitting, and was right like where her knees was. He was just like the same way Daenerys was staring into the flames. Remember when she burnt everybody at Vase Dothrak? I remember how the lady was talking to her, but she wasn't even looking at her. She just kept staring into the flames. It was like she's clearly seeing something, but what is she seeing? John was doing that too. He was dead, just staring into it. Like, mm -hmm. I thought it was really weird. And, and I also think he's lying about not seeing anything when he died. I think he was, I think he saw something. And he's lying. And he made a weird face when he was done. He was just like, you know, like that was weird and then kind of walked off. I got to agree with you because I do think that he saw something else and he's not let, letting us know everything. I don't think, just because they keep 
boosted him up to be something great that I don't see him dying and it's just nothing there. I think that he is holding back. He was looking into the flames because, you know, when she was talking, he was like, how do you even know? And it was cute. He was like, I command you. Don't bring me back. And she's like, uh, you ain't got to say so. He did. But that was cute. Um, but I did, I did like that. Um, they were like he was. Um, John was like um, asking me these questions. She was like, "Well, you know, I don't know. I just kind of look." And she's kind of, she's like, you know, how when people talk, they like talk with their hands. And she was like, "Well, I'm looking into the flames. I'm kind of, and that's when you kind of see him looking. And then she's talking, but he's kind of, um, kind of in a daze. But he's been like that as well when Mel was around. When uh, she first met him at the wall. And, you know, when she flashed herself and got on top and he was, like, staring at her and caressing her. And he looked like he was just in a daze. And she, she was, like, talking to him in a soothing voice and everything. And then he just kind of shakes his head and then he forces her off. So I think Mel does bring something out of him. If not that, he definitely sees things. And he's, he was in a daze before. So wouldn't put it past him that when he came back there was something else going on. Indeed. Okay, next question from Danielle Gonzalez. Will the Glovers and other houses bend the knee to the Starks? <clears throat> bend the knee to the Starks, or will there be civil war in the North with houses that didn't honor the Starks' call? They bend in that damn knee. And if you didn't honor the Starks, you can hang. Just like my girl Sansa said, you're done. You sealed your own fate. The Starks are back in Winterfell. It's over. It's a rapski. Boom. I don't. I don't think. Um, I think there'll be contention. I mean, you have a bastard and a female who's in who's in Winterfell, realistically, right? Like there, there could be some type of contention, like especially if you want to get in good with the crown. If word hasn't already spread about Cersei from King's Landing and everything, and you're thinking that you can still be in good with the Lannisters or whatever, like who's to say that somebody wouldn't want to take the castle back from the girl and the bastard? In order to, to usurp and have the power of the North, like I don't, I don't think it's going to be that easy. What I do think is that since we didn't get the Manderly or whoever Switcheroo speech, maybe we'll get that next episode, and that'll be the thing that turns the tide for more. Jesus, the Bolton, and Jesus. No, or maybe you know, you know, there could be something. I think there would be some type. Of Brittany, you're you're kind of sounding like sound wave right now. You're phasing in and out. It happens. You might have technical difficulties. Go ahead, T. <laughs> I'm sorry, my cat's like scratching at the door trying to come in. So if you hear like scratching. You know, you're so oh, huh? You're a very aggressive cat. Yeah, it's weird thing about my cat is I think she thinks she owns me, not like the other way around. My cat is truly petty. You see that she has no fucks to give. I, I think most cats are like that. Cats are assholes. Oh yeah, she's she's a complete dick. Um, it's probably my fault, but what was the question again? I'm sorry, y'all. I keep doing this. Will, <clears throat> will the Glovers and other houses bend the knee to the Starks, or will there be civil war in the North from the houses that didn't honor the Starks' call? I don't think that, um, like, if Sansa or John was in a position that they would punish people for being scared to fight on a side that looked like it was going to lose. But at the same time, I do have to agree with um, Lady D is that because it is a girl and because it is a bastard and you have to think that Ramsey just made a really bad name for Snow so it's like it's going to have like a, a, a distaste in their mouths and then you also have to look back with um with baby Liana when she was saying how you know you're a bastard and she's a Lannister or Bolton so they already kind of put that in our mind that not everyone's backing up and then you had the conversation with the Glovers so people you have, they have people that would support the Starks, but then you also have other people. And then I don't think we saw Car Stark die. So in the back of my head, I'm thinking, what's going on with him? So it's one of those, it can flow either way. 
I think um, probably episode 10, we have to um, draw it out a little bit to see what's their next move because they need Winterfell now. Because, like, the hard part, I think, is done in a sense that they don't have to worry at least about the South side for right now because they already know winter is coming and that they needed Winterfell. So it's like a small victory, but it's not over by any means. I uh, uh, agree in consensus. There are going to be a few issues, I think, with some houses, but I don't think it'll be anything too big that they can't that they can't do without some major battles. Uh, at least I'm hoping, anyways. Um, I don't know. Maybe once they get the word out of what's to come, that you know, people need to rally. They need to get ready. They need to fully bind together as a North. If you really want to do it, you know. Set that shit aside until later. Let everybody survive this heavy shit that's coming first. And then if you really want to talk about who's going to be in charge, then we'll do something then. But I don't, I don't know. That probably isn't going to work out that way. Just my thought. All right. Ready for the next question? Mm-hmm. Okay. From Monero Geek, what do you think will happen? Oh, I'm sorry. No. I, th I think that kind of ties into what we just talked about. What do you think will happen with the houses that betrayed the Starks? Did anyone really betray them, though? Or did they just choose to, you know, try, try to hold on to what they have at that time because the North has been freaking ravaged for how long now? That's, that's a hard question, though, because, I mean, if there were no Starks ruling, there, there was no betrayal. I mean, unless they did it while Rob was still, you know, king of the North. But after he died, then it was kind of like free game, right? Well, you also have to think, they didn't fight against the Starks, they just didn't. It's more of they weren't loyal than they were um, traitors or anything like that, because they didn't fight against them. But you can't really be mad at people who are scared and your numbers aren't there. So I, don't, I think that at the end of the day, they're going to also take that into consideration. I mean, you had Stannis did the same thing. He's like, I'm not going to punish men who are fighting for their house, like that's what you're supposed supposed to do. That's what loyal people do. But I don't think I think Sansa was like that. Uh, the Umbers had to, because she didn't say the car starts, but she did say the Umbers had to go just because they gave up. Now that's a traitor move. But people who aren't fighting because they're scared, and you know, when you outside looking in, you have to. It's the survival of the fittest thing. It's also kind of going against rebelling. Because by royal decree, Ramsey is warden of the North. So when you take into consideration that, I don't think that you know they were traitors or anything like that. Yeah, I don't think they were traitors at the moment because they had a. I mean, the Boltons were ruling the North, and they were. You just support your rulers, so. I agree with that, uh, Brittany. Do you want to weigh in on that? on what, what will happen to any of the houses that may have betrayed the Starks, or do you even think that they did betray them just by not fighting? The Umbers will hang, as Sansa said so. The Car Starks, um, if they put up a fight, they'll hang, I guess. And um, I don't know. The Glovers, because they refused help, she'll probably take hostages. She'll pull some Ned stuff and take hostages from other families or whatever to keep them at bay because if it's not big enough for it to be a war it's just like mutterings or whatever it's probably easier to just take hostages and be like I'll kill this one I'll kill that one I'll kill all of them so I think it's, it's probably that's what I would do anyway that makes sense too speaking of the car Starks Love Love would like to know what happened to Lord Car Stark That's a good question. He wasn't there. Or was, I mean, I saw Karstark banners, so his his troops were there. Maybe he, maybe he was there in the background, I just didn't catch him. He has a common face. <laughs> so it's possible he was back there somewhere, but I saw the Stark, the Karstark uh, sunburst, so I know his troops were there. T? Yeah, I didn't even hear the question. I'm terrible at this. I was reading. Look, y'all know I, I don't be paying attention. Sorry. 
What happened to Lord Karstark? Oh, I, I don't know. That's what I, I said. That, uh, I, I don't know what happened to him. Say that, You're not dead to me unless someone tells me they saw you or I physically see it. So that's why I was like, the car starts is still in the back of my head because uh, just to quickly bring up that battle scene again, you notice that Ramsey sent the Umbers out because the Umbers, he was being super disrespectful to Ramsey. So he made the Umbers actually go out, but you don't see him. Well, he did send the car starts out with the force, right? Never mind. Forget I said that. Never mind. <laughs> My bad, but when you start thinking it out loud, I'm like, well, that didn't make sense because he did do this, so. Makes sense in your head, though. Go ahead, Lady D. Maybe not. No. Can't hear. Oh, sorry, Lady D, we're getting lag. Yeah. Hear at all. It's okay. okay. This time for us to like we have to go. Yeah. We passed our um, cutoff time by 26 minutes. <laughs> you guys that that put up other questions. So have so much more. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I did have other questions, you guys. Um, if you have any other questions, put them in the comments, and perhaps we can convince Sphinx to do a QA video if we get enough. So I'm sorry we can get to those, but we are out of time. I still um, have my own questions too, so it's it's very possible that maybe like Wednesday or Thursday, I can you know we can readdress it. Maybe Thursday. I knew there was gonna be so much. Like I knew it was gonna be a, a situation because so much happened in that episode. And I haven't even touched on half of it, literally. Well, so. find out in the, the comments, um, once the video's over, in the comments down below. If you want a part two, hit the thumbs up and comment, and then we'll see what we can do. Because yeah. um, I know we're pressed for time, and this was such an epic, epic episode that is so hard that, like I said, this was so much fun. So if you guys want this to, to happen again, like let us know, and then you know we'll try to work it out. Real. Give that thummy and comment and let me know. And if, if enough people want more, like I have more to say. I have plenty more to say. So if you want to hear it, just comment and you know down below and let us know and we'll we'll discuss and we'll finish it before the next episode airs. Because there's so much to talk about. We didn't even touch on the preview. You know, we didn't even go like to the future stuff. We barely got into the battle. <laughs> so y'all let us know. I'm going to let you guys sign out. Um, Alicia, go ahead. Um, well, you guys know me, Alicia K. I'm always around in the chats. You can always see me with the Not So Silent Sisters here. Um, Thursday, coming up, it's going to be either 7 or 8. I'm not sure yet, but we will have a Theory Thursday session on my channel. Be me, Sphinx, I do believe North. We'll be there, um, Lady D and T. You guys are invited if you do have time. And, folks, we will also also be having Mr. Tony Teflon joining us. So do stop by if you can. I will put a, uh, a thing out so you guys can get it. It'll be 7 8 o'clock. We're not sure yet, but I will let you know. Um, ladies, take it away. All right, go ahead. Uh, Lady D, I'll let you go next. Am I lagging? No, you're Yay! All right, so I'm Lady D. My my um, YouTube channel thing is at the bottom. Thanks for sticking in with us, and thanks for all the likes. And this was fun, guys. We I would like to keep doing this. This was great. So fun. I love chatting with like my girls, and I love my boys too. Like you know, the majority of the population is guys, right? And there's like us females sprinkled in there, and. And I just enjoy chilling with you guys and talking with you guys. I have no qualms with, with guys and, you know, testosterone or whatever. But I just, I enjoy it. And it started with just me and my sister. And that's why it's not so silent sisters, because we're literally sisters, me and the North were members. Then we added Alicia and then, like, Brittany. And now T Baby's here. And we just, more sisters. And it just became the thing. And it's so fun. And I love you guys. And thank you so much, you guys, for joining me, for real. Alicia. T-Baby, 
Brittany, for real, it means a lot to me. Especially on a Monday, like right after the show. That just happened yesterday, and you're here with me. You could have been anywhere. <laughs> Tita, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just going to throw my little sprinkle because, you know, I'm doing videos too, but uh, Wednesday, you know, I'm on small council, and you all, you – Saturday was just Clash of Queens, and that's always fun. So you can definitely check those things out. It is. It was such a pleasure just vibing out with you ladies and talking about Game of Thrones. I love the fact that not all of you guys agree with me, but then you do. I love the excitement. The fact that you guys are, like, bouncing up and down talking about this. That's how I am when it comes to actions. And, oh, first of all, the way Lady D just broke it down, that was – this was just so much fun. It's just like you watching someone who does the same stupid stuff that you do. Like, oh my God, I was like, we know we don't really want people to get beat down like that, but at the same time, it's Ramsey, so stop feeling bad for him. But I just, I just loved this. It was fun. It was laid back, cool, and like I said. Thumbs up the video and definitely let us know down below because if you let us know, common sense, we're going to take the D&D &D fact out, but if you let us know below, then we know y'all were down with this and then we're going to make it go again. So, And now that Thursday I got invited to this theory thing, like I'm obsessed with theories. I'm like a conspiracy theory a theorist in uh, Westeros. I I believe in all types of weird stuff, and I do need people to pull me back from the rabbit hole because, like, I'm still working on the fact that werewolves have been poisoned and that they're dying. And I know people are like, what? That's I know my mind is gone with some of this. My mind melted with Euron that Forsaken chapter. And by the way, that's coming out this week, so check that out. And once again, just thank you guys. This was fun. Yo, T, bring your best, bring your best Valyrian steel level ten foil. That's that's why that's why I'm doing it. Theories, Dude, she not not it. even the ones that might make sense. Just just bring it, damn it! I want to hear all of it. She got it. She got the theories for days. I do weird ones too. I will tell you guys this. All roads lead to Old Town. I don't care how many research things I do with certain topics. I always find myself in Old Town. So I'm going to just throw that out there. All roads lead to Old Town. She's blowing my mind right now. She's blowing my mind. Reading my mind as well. <sighs> okay, we're signing off. Did everybody say goodbye? Did I miss anyone? Everybody's good? All right, we're going to go... Damn, so much fun. I love you guys so much, for real. And thank you, everybody that's watching. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for hanging out this long. You know, it's been over two hours, and I really appreciate you. I said I was going to do a Q&A when I hit 300 subscribers, and I think before this aired, I was at like three, like 370 or 380-something. I tried. Not, I was stalking it every day, and I said, "Stop looking at the number. Just, just let it go." So I stopped watching it so close. But I'm close to 300. So when I do it, I'm gonna do just a Q and A, just to just chill with people that actually like care about my thoughts. It's weird. You guys are really crazy to care about my thoughts and what I have to say. But I enjoy it, and I love it, and I'm down for it. So when I hit 300, you'll see the posting for a Q and A. So subscribe so you don't miss that. I'm going to put links to all these ladies' channels in my description and subscribe to all of them because they're all epic awesome, like for real, on some deep stuff that I can't even begin to touch. So this is signing out of the Not So Silent Sisters. My sister, the North, remembers, fell out, but she's in the chat. I see you, girl. We love you. Y'all say hi. Give her a wave. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Messing up the vibe. Messing up the vibe. Lady, did you have something else you had to say before we go? I know I'm petty, y'all. I'm so petty. I know y'all want to go home. I'm sorry. What you have to say? Oh, okay, I'm done. All right, we have 53 likes, which is great, and it's awesome. But I wanted to say thank you. I, like, I hit 300 subscribers, and Alicia was supposed to do a video with me, and then we forgot because, like, I'm not going to tell y'all what I was doing, but regardless, we forgot. And, <laughs> and so, like... You guys suck. I'm going to do that. I realize there are a lot of people that, and I'm going to do it. And Alicia, it's really Alicia's fault because she didn't remind me, you know? So thank you. And my bad. I'm sorry. 
too late. How long ago was that? It was probably like forever ago. It was only like last week or something. You'd be all right. We'll get it. We'll get it together. We'll get it together. <laughs> okay, well, on my channel, when I hit 300, <laughs> I'm doing what I said I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, guys. Everybody wave. Say goodbye. Wave goodbye. Thank you all so much. We will see you. We'll, we'll coordinate something if you all comment enough for a part two. And if not, we'll see you next Monday for more Not So Silent Sisters. Bye, squad. Say bye, ladies. Wave your hands. Wave your hands. Everybody wave your hands. Alicia, wave your hands. There you go. Good job.